Brakata Yahweh, <clears throat> Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rechakodash. Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is the Tetragrammaton, and you see the Tetragrammaton there, the Yah, the Ha, the One Ha, and then I have the proper pronunciation of the Most High's name, which is Yahweh. Uh, Lord's will, this will be an edifying lesson, and I pray the Lord Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai work with my spirit. My mind in my mouth to bring out this lesson to make it edifying. Um, <clears throat> I want to say to water to the to our Abu, to vocab, the scoffers and the false prophets. You know because pretty much they make our life easy. You know because when they buck up against the truth, it gives us you know spiritual ammunition to go into the scriptures and give the proper edification. Now, just now as I was preparing this lesson uh just before i started i you know was checking through youtube and i see the elder apostle gabar is uh premiering right now he's almost he's like about a little more than a half hour in and when i tuned in it was about 28 minutes and i happened to tune in when he was about to play a point a point in the uh the uh upstart uh heady uh, Hedy Naquam and um, he started playing a video that I did years ago which he got from uh, uh, I, uh, he got from IUIC because they played the same video you know dealing with harlots and um, I was explaining it correctly to the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai by Shem and then they had a problem with it so Lord's will the spirit gives me the energy you know the energy and the strength to do this lesson and then jump right into that one because I have a couple of precepts I would like to bring out but there's going to be somewhat of a little bit of reading in this one so this is not for the scoffers and for the ones that come here for entertainment so you might want to ex you know exit stage left and go and see some other video because this is not going to be one of those <laughs> so let's get into it let me see Yep, 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 Yahweh, that's what they pronounce it as. <clears throat> but now let's get into it. What you're looking at before you is the Most High's name. I mean, it's usually rounded, This the Y is rounded, and all of these Yahs that you see are supposed to be smaller because the Yah is the smallest letter in the Hebrew. So when you, when you spell it like this, when you, when you spell it like this with the big Yah, this is off, really. Now, this one is better because it's a small, it's smaller. But usually the Yah, or not usually, the Yah is supposed to be a small Yah, not so big. So you have the Yah, the Ha, the Wa, and the Ha. Or you have a different language, different uh, Shemitic Hebrew languages. This is the uh, Aramaic script. You know, then you have the Paleo-Hebrew, the Phoenician, you know. So we get in, I want to get a couple of precepts and then get into some of this reading of these articles. I put the articles in the description box for those of you studious brothers that want to get into it and, you know, search through it. I did a lesson on this years ago through the Spirit and Power of Yahweh by Shem Shai, but I can't, I don't know if I still have it. And I don't, I don't know exactly what article I had used because vocab never gave me the... I'm sorry, not vocab. Abu never gave me the pronunciation of the Most High's name, what he calls him. He just gave me two names, Clement and Theodoret. You know, which was, uh, Clement was a, a Clement of Alexandria of the 2nd century AD. And Theodoret, he was of the, he was around, around the 5th century BC, 4th, 5th century BC, around, I mean AD. They were both in the AD era, all right? So, um, I had to go and do the research and found the information and found out that they pronounced the name of the Most High uh, Yahweh, but neither one of them spoke Hebrew. So, how do you get to that? Then some sources say that you know they got they got the name from the Samaritans and so on and so forth. So, Lord's we get into it, but like I said, I couldn't find the actual. Um, the actual research that I had years ago, but I found some other stuff we'll get into, Lord's will. Uh, Jeremiah 6.16, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, 
by Hashem Yahushai, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for what? For the old paths. The old paths are what? The, the, uh, the paths of our forefathers. You know, because we look at history of other nations, especially the Edomites, but the most important history to us is our own history, you know, of the Hebrew Israelites. Yes, Hebrew Israelites. You have camps out there that have a problem with us saying Hebrew Israelites. It's amazing. Anyways, where is the good way? Because that is the good way. The old paths are the good way. It says, and walk therein. And you shall find rest for your souls. Why? Because this is where we belong. You know, this is our rest. This is our refreshing. But most Jakes don't want that. It says, but they said we will not walk there and see. And this is why Jake is fucked up like they are. <coughs> Excuse me. And please forgive me for my Sanskrit. <coughs> you know, my Paleo Sanskrit. <coughs> now the next... <coughs> Scriptures in the book of Job 8 and 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of what? The former age, the old paths, the former age. And prepare thyself to what? To the search of their fathers. Because this is what we're supposed to be doing. Searching our forefathers. Right? For we are but of yesterday and know nothing. Why? Because our books have been burnt up. You know, the records have been burnt up. You know, all of that information has been swept under the rug. Inside joke, you know, uh, so we're going to get into the origins of why they call him Yahweh. And really the name is Yahweh. Because our days upon earth are a shadow. Yeah, and you know, when we die, we come back. You know, because there is a such thing called reincarnation or regeneration in the scriptures, which they have a problem with that. Shall not they teach? They have a problem with the truth in general. It says, shall they not what? Teach thee, and tell thee, and utter words out of their heart. This is why the Lord said, I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with wisdom comes knowledge, right? It says, but with all thy getting, get understanding. Because understanding is the key to the whole application knowledge and wisdom is beautiful but without understanding is useless okay so let's get into it this is a uh, pen museum the pronunciation of the infallible name according to a Ju according to a jewish text in the museum so this individual uh found this in a mu in a jewish so-called you know the small hat text in the museum or it could be a text that dates back to Jake, you know. It says uh, one of the mysteries, uh, uh, one of the mysteries of biblical scholarship, mystery, and the Lord said He will reveal His secrets unto who? His servants, the prophets. Uh, one of the mysteries of biblical scholarship is the correct form and pronunciation of the name of the God of Israel, which He is the power. Period. This name consists of four consonants, which may be re represented in English by the letters YHWH, which is a tetragrammaton, which the word tetragrammaton, tetra is four, and grammaton is where you get the word letter, you know, or, or, or uh, like a pronunciation, the four letters or the four pronunciation, you know, but the, you know, uh, uh, how's, how does the Elder Pasitar say it, um, loosely translated, it says, but the vocalization of the word known to English readers, Jehovah is a fairly modern invention. Now, we've dealt with the letter J and with the letter V. And I've showed you in other lessons that the letter J, you know, was not a part of the Hebrew and neither was the letter V. And even when you go back into the Latin, you know, when you go back into the Latin, the letter V was not pronounced V as we pronounce it today. A lot of people erroneously quote a saying that Julius Caesar said, Vini, Vidi, Vici, which means I came, I saw, I conquered. But when you go back to the actual Latin pronunciation, it's Vini, Vidi, Wiki. I came, I saw, I conquered. Okay? Uh, you have another term, they say, in vino veritas, 
You know, it should be in we know where it is. Because there was no such thing as a V pronunciation. The letter appeared back then, but it was pronounced as a W or a U. So it should be, if anything, it should be Yo Yehoa, right? Which is the name Yahawah. Which the consonants or the, should I say, the pronunciation is correct, but not the actual, uh, not the pronunciation, the the sounding of it is correct, like as far as the uh, syllables, should I say. The syllables are correct, but the pronunciation is not. It says, is a fairly modern invention arising in the Middle Ages, in fact, a philological monstrosity. So they, what, they, what they mean by a philological monstrosity, the word phil philology means the construction of language, okay? So they're saying it's a monstrosity because it doesn't fit. And they're correct on that because this is not... The, the uh, Hebrew was not pronounced with a J or a V, okay? Either E or O, but that's another story. It says, The Jews themselves, according to their own tradition, had given up the public pronunciation of the word before the Christian era. And while there is evidence that the knowledge still survived in esoteric circles among the Jews, the tradition of the pronunciation was at last utterly lost to them. See? So, devil, Satan. Oh, man. Satan jumping on everybody. All right. So it says they, they, pointed the tetra, uh, they pointed the tetragrammaton, an example, with vowel points indicating that another word should be pronounced in its stead. And it is the word of the Lord. Uh, it is the other word, Lord, which in almost all translations of the Bible down to the more scientific attempts of modern times represents the sacred name. In the King James Version, it is spelled in capitals to distinguish it from the same word used as an as an epithet, right? Like the word Lord in all caps is Yahweh. The word Lord with the first letter capitalized, the rest small case, that represents a Lord, a landlord, a judge, so on and so forth, depending on the, on the uh, uh, status of the person. It says, but a tradition, see, when you read about Esau stuff, there's a lot of conjecture, tradition, uh, theory. You know, you're going to find a lot of conjecture, nothing uh, substantial. They're saying possibilities, all right? It says, but we're, because Esau brings it up, because he has the credentials, so to speak, because he is in a position right now of authority, we just have to swallow it down. And this is why them devils, you know, in the apologetics, apology, or whatever the hell you call it, say that we do not have a Christian world view of the scriptures. And we do not. Because the Christian world view of the scriptures is totally wrong. It is a Renaissance uh, tradition that was given to the world by Esau when he first got back into power. That's why it says that they would deceive the whole world. A part of the deception is the doctrine, the appearance of the Most High, the appearance of Yahweh Shai, the appearance of the angels, the appearance of the Israelites, the appearance of the nations, the names of the nations, and also the doctrine that was being taught by them. Okay? They're on top. Everybody else is on the bottom. They're the lords. Everybody else are the serfs. Uh, it says, but a tradition of the pronunciation survived as is so often the case with survivals. In certain Orthodox quarters, the Greek fathers Theodoret and Epiphanius report that the Samaritans maintained the pronunciation of Yabe, and the present writer has discovered in a Samaritan document of the beginning of the 19th century or an Arabic transcription of the name which is pronounced Yahwah. This is close, but it's not because it's Yahawah, and we're going to show you that. Matter of fact, or, and it says, or Yahweh, see, so even with these so-called scholars in their theories and their research, they never come to a solid conclusion because when you look at these different scholars, they have varying uh, interpretations of certain things, whether it's the name of the Most High, the name of Yahweh Shai, uh, particular um, uh, scriptures. They never are 100% in agreement with each other, Okay. Similar forms are also found in early magical agnostic papyri. It says, on the basis of such tradition and on philological grounds, there has arisen 
the modern, listen, the modern scientific pronunciation Yahweh, generally though erroneously in English spelled Yahweh, all right? So modern scientific pronunciation because the majority of the so-called scholars agree that his name was this. So that's where they, they just went with the majority. But the scriptures say, follow not a multitude to do evil. Anyways, this is the uh, plate that, they, that they're getting the inscription from. This is apparently was supposed to be uh, some mystic, mystic, you know, that that was that so-called had magical powers or whatever the case may be. All right, so we're going to read a little bit more. But what I want to do is I want to go here right quick. Let me get two precepts because I want to show you something. Even in the blue letter, it gives you somewhat of a pronunciation of the Most High's name. All right, so we're going to read Genesis 2 and 4. It says, These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth, meaning the records, when they were created, and the day that the Lord, all caps, this is where the touch of grammaton comes in, and it was all in caps to distinguish from the regular uh, first letter capital, the other letters, uh, smaller case, Lord. All right? It says, the, uh, the powers made the earth and the heaven. So when we look up the word Lord in all caps, right, you have the word, you have the tetragrammaton, the Yah, Ha, Wa, Ha, which is Yahweh. Okay, here they have Yehovah, right? And then it goes back to the root word Hayah, right? It says Jehovah, the existing one, the proper name of the one true power, unpronounced except with the vowel points, which is how can you pronounce something with only vowel points? Uh, should, I'm sorry, how can you pronounce anything with just consonants? Because they say it was all consonants. It was not able to be pronounced. Now we go to the word Hayah. They have it there, Hayah. Strong's H, 1961. Hayah. Hayah. I don't know if you caught that, but if it's not, if you can't, if you couldn't hear it, because I really don't want to play it too, too loud, uh, you can go to the word and type in, or, or uh, yeah, go to the, the Lord's name. And go to one the first um, root word, and it'll be Hayah, Hayah, and that's how we pronounce it. Then they go. There's another root word. Here it's Hawa, Hawa, right? And when you listen to it, Strong's H, 1933, Hava, Hava. So they say Hava, which is not really Hava because the V is not pronounced there. It should be Hawa, Hawa. Okay, I don't know if you can hear it. Brothers, let me know if you can hear it or not. So, so far we have the word Haya, and then you have the word Hawa, which is what? The second part of the Most High's name. The first part of the Most High's name is found here in Psalm 68 and 4, which is a shortened version of the Most High's name. Sing unto the Most High, sing praises to his name. How can we sing praises to his name if we don't know his name? It says, extol him. Meaning exalt him. And what is the greatest exaltation of the Most High? Yes, his works, his greatness, his mercy. But all of that is captured in the name and the proper pronunciation of the proper name of the Most High. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name. Here it says Jah, but we know it's Yah. And rejoice before him. When we go to that shortened form of the Most High's name, right? In the English is Ja, but here we have the Ya and the Ha, which is pronounced Strong's H3050. Yah. 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 So when you put Yah and Strong's H1933, Hava. Hava. And just just uh, remove the va and put a wa. So we have what? Strong's H3050. Yah. Yah. Strong's H1933. Hava. Hava. Yah. 
Hawa. Yeah, Hawa. Okay, so even in the Blue Letter Bible, they have somewhat of a pronunciation, which we know that the V was not in there. Because if the V wasn't in the Latin language, which is younger than the Hebrew, how could it be in the Hebrew? That va or that V sound didn't come to way later. And I did some lessons on that. If I could find it, Lord's will, I, I'll re-upload it. And you might even be able to find it on this channel if you type in the search engine of this channel, GMSFO Doc Channel 12, and type in what about that letter V? And I believe the other one was what about that letter J? Which when I did those lessons, those were year, that was years ago, and we recently found out uh, through research that Elder Pastor Hart did that John Tresino in 1524 came up with the letter J because we were saying it was the 1600s and the 1700s but it really was even earlier than that all right so I just wanted to get that so let's go so now we have somewhat of a pronunciation a proper pronunciation of the Lord's name even within the blue letter Bible because sometimes they're on point with their pronunciation such as the word Hayah Strong's H 1961 you see? So this is to be, to become, because the Mosai's name is Yah, which is He. Hawa is to be or to exist. Okay? So let's go back. It says, Engage in deciphering the collection of Jewish incantation bowls in the museum. I have came upon a text which for the first time in the Juda Judaistic field certainly represents the certainly represents the pronunciation of the tetragrammaton. In the bowl in question, it gives you the name number. There is read the adjuration that the evil spirit shall not appear to a certain man and his wife. The man's name in the Aramaic, the characters are the Jewish square script, and it gives you the name here. Barak uh Barak Kab Haba, something like that, son of Mam M M Mammy, Mammy. His wife's name is Ispandarmid, daughter of X. The mother's name is Mutilated. I give these circumstances in order to indicate that we are dealing with actual personal names, not with arbitrary magical formulas. Now, the man's name, which I have transcribed above, so he transcribed it, which the word transcribe means to, to bring it across from one language into another, by, by tracing the letters from one language to another. All right, above in Hebrew characters is one that cannot be at once explained from Semitic or Iranian philology, meaning the construction of the name in those languages. Most of the names in the bowls are Persian. The first four characters, however, are naturally read Birik, which is Barak, Aramaic for blessed. This suggests good Jewish names like Baruch, which is really Barak, the Hebrew equivalent of the Aramaic form, Berakiah, etc. But the typical Jewish name, like ancient Semitic names in general, contains a divine element in composition. Berakiah, Barak, Yahu. See? Because it's really Barak, Yahawah. Berakiah, Barak, Yah. Barak, Yah. Or Barak, Yaha. You know, Yahawah. Or Yah. Yahu has blessed. Or Yahawah has blessed. Uh, Yahoo being an early form of Yahweh, uh, YHWH or its contraction, contraction meaning the shortened version of it. Baruch or Berik, likewise, blessed of Yahoo or Yahweh. This is why you hear Pastor going to Benjamin Netanyahu, you know, give us Yahweh. All right. We expect that then, but then when they speak to the average people out there or to the lower, lower in their congregation, I'm talking about the small hats, they give them Hashem. Which the name Hashem, Ha is the, and Shem or Shem is name. So how come they say Hashem for the name, but then when they when they speak about somebody and demonize them, they say anti-Sem. Why not anti-Shem? You say Hashem, but then when you say somebody's coming against you, you call them an anti-Sem. What's that all about? We expect then after... Our first component, bless the divine name. Now, the simplest reading of the five following characters, we must supply the vowels, gives Yabe, which that's what they say, but B was probably soft. So you see how they keep using probably and, you know, uh, what was the other one? Probably and 
uh, modern scientific pronunciations. All right. But then, no, but this is how it's pronounced. So often transliteration might be ex uh, more exactly represented by Yahweh. This is the Yahweh or Yahweh as it is also spelled of modern. Of, this is the Yahweh or Yahweh as it is also spelled of modern critical science. And what do the scriptures tell us about modern critical science? Let's go real quick to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. It says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings, because that's what they are, profane and vain babblings outside of the temple. That whole so-called Christian doctrine is a profane and vain babblings. So I'm not accepting nothing they say, you know? Now, if they say something that's right according to the scriptures, well, yeah, because, of course, you're not going to F up the history, you know? And Yahweh Shai went to Capernaum and cursed Capernaum. Yeah, well, that's in the scriptures. But as far as their interpretation, their interpretations are off. You know, I'll say 99% of the time, unless they're hitting on the, the uh, history or on some particular prophecy that took place historically, you know, that they may get right. And what an opposition of science falsely so-called, because science is an opposition to the scriptures. Because they're trying to prove things, you know, um, by actual proof, not by faith. Okay, so going back, it says, how, how came the exorcist, which that's who the guy is, an exorcist, just like uh, Simon the Sorcerer, to spell out this divine name occurring in the composition of a personal name? Certainly no Jew of the period the bowls belong to the 6th uh, six or 7th century A.C., pronounce that name, or in any name composition in the Old Testament is a tetragrammaton used. It is represented by Yeho or Yahu, Yah. My, my, what? My theory to explain the peculiar phenomenon is this. So see, my theory. So these are all conjectures. Conjectures are not facts. Conjectures are opinions. Conjectures are theories. A theory and an opinion is not a fact. It says, uh, The exorcist client was Baruch or Berik, Berikaya or the like, but in spelling the name uh, exorcist has by a jail the spirit spelled it out. And I looked this word up. It's uh, some kind of like a comedic way. A lighthearted display of wit and cleverness. In other words, you know, it's a, it's like a ha ha ha, you know, a ha ha moment, but it's like a clever way of saying something, but like in a, I guess like in a just way, you know, from what I can best uh, gather of the word, it's uh looks like a uh, French word. Spell it out. He has expressed the pronunciation of the infallible name because of its magical potency, and it does have power. The name of the Most High has power. This is why they don't want the name out there. They don't want us to learn about the name. This is why you'll have individuals like Abu and Vocab and all those different individuals trying to sway Jake away from those names because there is power in those names. Because it tells us in the scriptures that if we went off, but we, we pray unto those names, then we will be delivered. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 8. comes right up. I hope I can find the, because there's a lot of verses in it. I hope I can find the right one. Supplication, the service, hand on in place, and thou hearest, forgive. Oh, if any trespass, and the trespass, condemning the wicked, righteous. When thy people, Israel, be smitten down before the enemy. Let me see if there's another one. Here we go. <clears throat> First Kings 835. 835, yeah. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray towards this place and what and confess thy name. How can we confess the name of the Lord if we don't know how to pronounce it? <clears throat> and turn from their sin when thou afflictest them, 
then hear thou in heaven. Why? Because we invoked the name of the Most High Yahweh. Now we know that it's Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai because of the great sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made for us 2,000 years ago to reconcile us, bring us back into the friendship of the Most High. So we can be on the good side of the Lord now instead of being on the bad side. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sins the, the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon the, thy land, which thou gavest, uh, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. Right. And even <clears throat> there's another one. This is dealing with the Israelite foreigners. <clears throat> Right, here we go. Uh, verse 46. If they sin against thee, that's when you go to battle, right? For there is no man that sin if not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. Yet if they shall bethink themselves, keep that in mind, bethink themselves, meaning what? remember back, repent and remember back, the former ways, as we just read earlier in uh, Jeremiah 6.16 and Job chapter 8, right? It says, In the land whither they were carried cap uh, captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul, and the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, which we do, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressors wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carried them captives, that they may have com uh, compassion on him. All right? So that's pretty much it. So when we call upon the name of the Lord, that is the beginning stages of forgiveness and repentance. All right? <clears throat> So it says uh, back here, as it were, the, he confronts the devils with a, with a happy etymology. You cannot touch this man, for this very name is a talisman. I will pronounce that name for you, and when you hear it, you will tremble and flee. To be sure, only a mighty conjurer would dare to express the magical energy latent in an ordinary name. Now plays uh, on names are most common in Semitic in antiquity. Now keep in mind, this is, this is his uh, opinion. This is what he, you know... The, the, this is how he put it in his own terms all right uh, it says but in the present case the conjurer was giving the ver uh, veritable etymology of the word of course this was not orthodox <laughs> did the conjurer get his knowledge of the pronunciation of the tetragrammaton from an esoteric jewish tradition or did it possibly come to him by way of a greek ma of greek magic this what theory would explain the B as the third letter in the name. However, this may be uh, this may be he knows enough to interpret correctly and practically a Jewish name which has which was charged with magic potency. So pretty much this is a lot of conjecture. All right. When we move on to this Clement of the of Alexandria, he was one of the individuals that was credited with being one of the ones that pronounced the name. Yahweh or the Tetragrammaton as Yahweh. And this individual did a lot of, which he was, he was a Jake. You know, he did a lot of uh, 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 what they call great works back then, you know, but he only spoke the Greek language and, you know, other languages, but he didn't speak Hebrew. It says, date of birth unknown, died about the year 215. He was born around one something. St. Clement was an early Greek theologian and head of the Catechetical School, which is a, a Roman Catholic, of Alexandria. Excuse me. Athens is given as a starting point of his journeyings and was probably his birthplace. He became a convert to the faith that, uh, and traveled from place to place in search of higher instruction. 
attaching himself successfully to different masters, to a Greek of Ionia, to another of Magna Gratia, to a third of Corley Syria, after all of whom he addressed himself in turn to an Egyptian and a Syrian, uh, and converted Palest Palestinian Jew. At last he met Pantanus Pantanus in Alexandria and in his teaching found rest. The place itself was well chosen. It was natural and, uh, that Christian speculation should have at home should have a home at Alexandria. This great city was at the time a center of, of culture as well as of trade. This is why you had the Library of Alexandria there. A great university had grow, grown up under the long-continued patronage of the state. The intellectual temper was broad and tolerant, as became a city where so many races mingled. So, sounds similar to America today. Says the philosophers were critics or eclectics, and Plato was the most favorite of the old masters. Neoplatonism, the philosophy of the new pagan renaissance, had a prophet at Alexandria in the person of Ammonius Saccas, the Jews, uh, the Jews too, who were there in very large numbers. Yeah, because you go, you have what they call the Alexandrian Jews, breathed its liberal atmosphere and had assimilated secular culture. Yeah, because everybody was assimilated into that life, and this was the very um, later on in the history. This was the very thing that. Um, that Constantine did. He used the, the his beliefs in paganism to get both the Christians and the pagans to join, you know, his religion, his new found religion of so called Christianity, or Hamashiachism, you know, um of the time. But he was able to still make money off of the pagans and the so called Christians. They, they there formed the most enlightened colony of the dispersion, which is what? The Israelites that were dispersed. So it says, having lost the use of Hebrew, including the great Clement of Alexandria, right? They found it necessary to what? To translate the scriptures into the more familiar Greek. All right? Now, when we go to the prologue of the wisdom of uh, Sirach, it says, because he translated from the Hebrew, which he knew Hebrew, into the Greek, so that those Israelites that were that only read Greek and understood Greek can get the teachings of what? Of our forefathers. And this is what he said in this great work that he did with others, you know, concerning the translation of Hebrew or the Hebrew language into in uh, uh, another language, such as Greek. It says, Wherefore let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention. And that favor and attention, you have to sometimes go back to the origin of the language to really get a better idea of what's being said because whatever language you read it in, it's it's just a, an idea of what's written, originally written. So, But if you want to know more, about the understanding and interpretation of that, you have to go back to the original language. That's why we look up words in the Hebrew, we look up words in the, in the Greek, sometimes we look up words in the Latin to get a better understanding of what is meant by certain passages. It says, and to pardon us, right, forgive us, wherein we may seem to come short of some words, right, because when you speak the Hebrew language, the Hebrew language is very direct, when you speak, uh, uh, in the case of today, we speak English. English is a very nasty language, all right, because there are so many things that are inserted into the English language to make a co so-called complete sentence, where in Hebrew, it's very, uh, um, very um, easy. You know, like uh, Gad used to say, me go kill white man now, you know? But if you would try to say that in a proper sentence, so-called, you would have to add all of the I will and come and, di you know. So when you go to the Hebrew and you try to translate it into another language, it's very hard to do and to get the right words in that language to convey the message. Because sometimes you had what they call idioms. You know, sometimes certain things we read in the English doesn't really make sense from the Hebrew because there were certain ways that the Hebrew was written. I'll give you an example in the Spanish. You have a, a, a joke in Spanish, and in Spanish when you tell a joke, the joke rhymes, you know, and it makes sense. 
But when you translate it into the English, it doesn't have the same effect because you don't get the pun. Because it's just empty words. It's the same thing with the Hebrew. When you translate it into another language, you don't get the same force that you would if you read it in its original form. I hope I'm, I'm not losing anyone. It says, what you have labored to interpret for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated, meaning brought over from the Hebrew into another language, into another tongue, have not the same force in them. And that includes everything from the name of the Most High to the name of Yahweh Shai to just in general, you know. So that's why you have to go back to the origins of language in order of the scriptures in order to get a better understanding. And not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. Okay, so we're reading here that they lost the use of Hebrew. Right. And this is dealing with Clement. It says, and they found it necessary to translate the scriptures into the more familiar Greek. Which you lost some of the translation there. All right. So these are the individuals that they give credit. This is one of the individuals that they give credit to uh, being one of the ones that, that carried on the tradition, so-called, of the, uh, um, of the uh, uh, name uh, Yahweh, as they say. Now, when we go here, this is the other individual, Theodoret, right? Which he was more than likely a Jake also. Theodoret of Cyrus, or Cyrus, Right, It says, was an in, uh, influential theologian of the school of Antioch, biblical commentator and Christian bishop of Cyrus, 423 to 457. He played a pivotal role in, the, in, the, in several 5th century Byzantine church controversies that led to various ecumenical acts and schisms. And, you know, it goes into the history of it. <clears throat> we go to the biography. According to Tillamont, he was born at Antioch in 393 and died either at Cyrus about a two days journey from uh, east of Antioch or 80 Roman miles, so on and so forth, blah, 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 right? We keep scrolling through here. It says, um, though he speaks of Theodore of Tarsus and Theodore of Mos Mopsuestia as his teachers, this is improbable. Though it was certainly their theological tradition in which he was brought up, he clearly also, though, received an extensive classical education, unsurprisingly for the child of prosperous parents in a city he was well-to-do, which had long been a center of, of secular learning and culture. His correspondence included the sophist Arius and Isocasius. He, meaning Theodoret, understood Syriac as well as Greek, but was not acquainted with either Hebrew or Latin. So how can he carry on a so-called tradition or the pronunciation of the name of the Most High if he didn't even speak Hebrew? How would he be able to fact check that? Mm -hmm. Clement, we've read that about Clement that they lost the use of the Hebrew language. So how can they decipher if this, if this so-called pronunciation is correct? Mm -hmm. Are we just to accept, accept it because today... The uh, so-called authority of the Roman Catholic Church says that that's how you pronounce the Lord's name. But then we can't say, well, we believe through faith that the Lord, when he raised up his men, you know, uh, dealing with uh, um, Elder Abba Bivens, High Priest Arya, King Masha, High Priest Yaiqua, that the Lord gave the pronunciation of the language and the name of, his, of the Most High and His Son to High Priest Arya. We can't believe that. Why? Because we're insignificant. We're niggas, spicks, spooks, wetbacks, tantos. Come on. It says, in these letters, he quotes from Homer, Sophocles, Euripides, Aristophanes, Demosthenes, and Thucydides. When he was 23, so you get the point. He understood Syriac as well as Greek, but was not acquainted with either Hebrew or Latin. Okay. So, the last one I have is here. This is, um, why do you use the name Yahweh? Don't you know that this name was in, uh, invented by a Catholic monk in 1725 AD? And this is the argument, you know, but there it goes back further than that. 
Uh, plus, there are 20 different ways our Heavenly Father's name can be pronounced. No, that's not true. You know, well, they do that, whatever. All right. Uh, the belief that Yahweh originated from a Catholic monk could not be further from the truth. But by it goes, you know, you could read through. I'm just going to get to some of the finer points. The true pronunciation of the name or the Church of Grammaton was never lost. That's what they say. Several early Greek writers of the Christian church testified that the name was pronounced Yahweh, Cyclopedia Judaica, right? Gives you the cross references. Early Christian writers such as Clement of Alexandria in the second century, which we just found out, the Hebrew language is lost, had used the form Yahweh, thus this pronunciation of the Tetragrammaton was never really lost. Okay, really? How did he know? Did he, how, he, how could he cross-reference something that he doesn't understand? It says, Greek transcriptions, transcriptions also indicated that the Chachagrammaton should be pronounced Yahweh. Greek transcriptions also indicated that Yahweh should be, should be pronounced, or that the Chachagrammaton should be pronounced Yahweh in Cyclopedia Britannica. The pronunciation Yahweh is indi indicated by transliteration of the name into Greek in early Christian literature, which you can't back translate something into a, a younger language. We just read that that you're going to come up short on these things. It says, um, and this is exactly what they did. They back translated the the Greek. Let me see. No, I'm sorry. The what was it? Um, when Desiderius Erasmus, um translated the Textus Receptus. They could not find a Greek manuscript uh, of the um, book of 1 John, the 5th chapter, 7th and 8th verse, I believe it was. And this is what they call today the Kama Johannium. And what they did was they back-translated from the Latin into the Greek because they couldn't find a Greek manuscript. And he wasn't translated at first unless they found a Greek manuscript. So what did they do? They back translated from the Latin into the Greek. And oh, we found, oh, look what we found. We found it here. Look, this one here. And then that's why he, he did it. You know, he translated it, but it wasn't in there. And this is what, what brings in the erroneous teachings of the so-called Trinity, which is an addition by the Roman Catholic Church of a pagan belief of the Trinity because the Trinity is a pagan belief. You're not going to find the word Trinity in the Bible. When it says that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, it means that they all are in agreement. But they're three separate spirits, three separate entities that agree in one. Not one spirit that has three different characteristics. That's a goddamn lie. All right? So it says the pronunciation Yahweh indicated by the translation of the name into Greek in early Christian literature, in the form, it gives you the letters there, Clement of Alexandria or Yabe Theodore. By this time, Greek B had the pronunciation of V. So you see how that goes? One wrote it this way, the other one wrote it that way. Strictly speaking, Yahweh is the only name of God, which is not. In Genesis, wherever the word Sem name is associated with the divine, it should be Shem. With the divine being, that name is not Yahweh, Yahweh. And it goes on and on and on. Let me see. Uh, right, they keep saying that the name Yahweh could be recognized in the second century, 700 years before any Hebrew manuscript containing Jehovah. You know, it's just as a little closer but without the V and the E and the O and all of that. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Correct pronunciation of the divine name Jehovah, which is really Yahweh, is the best known English pronunciation of the divine name. Although Yahweh's, Yahweh is favored. Oh, here we go. Let me see. Correct pronunciation of the divine name Jehovah or Yahweh is the best known English pronunciation of the divine name, although Yahweh is favored by most Hebrew scholars. Favored by most. 
The oldest Hebrew manuscript present the name in the form of four consonants, commonly called a tetragrammaton, from Greek tetra meaning four and gramma letter, right, four letters. These four letters written from right to left are YHWH and may be transliterated into English as YHWH or JHVH. Uh, Jehovah insight on the scriptures, watchtower, blah, 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 all right? They keep saying that the, that Yahweh is favored by Hebrew scholars, and this is why they accept it. They, they, the majority says this, so that's what it is. The majority rules, but the scriptures say, follow not a multitude to do evil. Just because the majority agree on something doesn't mean that it makes it true. Uh, <clears throat> and it pretty much keeps on going into the same thing with different sources from the Oxford Companion, the Wycliffe Bible Dictionary, a uh, book about the Bible different books and stuff that they go into and you brothers that like i said that are i put all of these in the description box if you want to get more into it get down james brown inside joke so let's go to isaiah 28 because we dealt with going back to the ancient ways preparing the search of our fathers we went into how the name of the Moksai is pronounced in the uh, in Genesis, the second chapter, the fourth verse, when you go back. And then also Psalms, the 68th chapter, uh, the fourth verse, when you go back into the uh, root words of the word. They give you a close. They gave Yah and Hava, which should be Yahawa. Yahawa, right? Uh, so now we're going to go into what happened to us. Matter of fact, before we get to that, Let's go here first. Jeremiah 17. You already know where we're going. And for and thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, which just begins first and foremost with our land, because that inheritance is a land, but also an inheritance includes family name, uh, language, custom, religion, so on and so forth, way of dressing, festivals, and so on and so forth. And I will cause thee to serve the enemy, thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, which is here in America. For you have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So we discontinued from our heritage. And in discontinuing from our heritage, what happened? We were separated from our language, our culture, and certain of those captivities. Not in all of them, because some allowed us to keep our customs. Others did not. When we, when we go up into the, you know, into the Americas... <clears throat> beginning with the late 1400s until the present you know we were removed from our native language all right we were removed from our native customs when the spaniards came to the americas and they came across issachar they could not justify these people of these tribes to be uh, barbarians because they saw that they had written records you see, they had written records of themselves. So what did the ambassadors do? They took the written records and they burnt them to justify that bullshit of them being barbarians so they can, you know, put them under the yoke of so-called Christianity. This is what they did. You know, these devils are very devious. And a lot of this information nowadays, some of this stuff is hard to find because these devils are, are hiding things. They're buying things like Google. So when you type in, years ago, you used to be able to type in easy. You used to get information by the tons. Type in whatever on Google, boom, and boom, you would hit it. But what happened over the years, now when you type in certain things, they deviate you from the actual um, information and give you the disinfos. They also give you the fact checkers. Their fact checkers, well, we, someone, it says that so-and-so is so-and-so, but that's false. That's a lie. Oh, why? Because you said so? Fucking lying bastards. So in us discontinuing from our heritage, one of the things we discontinued was from our language. And it says, Isaiah 28, 11, for with stammering lips and what in another tongue would he speak to this people? Because we would lose our original language and part of our heritage was our language. 
you know? So when we read in 1 Kings, the eighth chapter, that if we turn to the land of the Lord, if we turn and call upon his name in our calamities, the uh, King Solomon asked the Most High to hear us. And it's very fitting that it was King Solomon because he is the mediator today as Yahweh Shai. So he mediated for us, for us back then in a prayer, which he later came back, uh, um, what was it, about a thousand years, 900 some odd to a thousand years later, and actually um, cemented that in his blood as Yahweh Shai. So when we agree to Baruch, 2 and 29 says, If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations because we were dispersed. Hence the word diaspora. That word diaspora does not fit the other nations as far as the scriptures are concerned because the dispersed are the Israelites. And in our dispersions, we spoke different languages because we were conquered by certain nations and we were forced to learn their ways. All right? Even uh, Daniel uh, I believe I believe he had to learn the Chaldean language, if I'm not mistaken, you know, and so and so many other uh, um, examples. All right. It says, uh, for I knew that thou would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. Right. But in the land of their captivity, they shall what remember themselves. So in the land of their captivities with an S plural shall they remember themselves. And this is why we read in 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, and uh, where was that at? You know what, let me do this with the same time. Here we go, First John, uh, First Kings eight forty seven. Yet if they shall what bethink themselves, what does it mean to bethink themselves? To remember Bethink. The word there is what? Shawab. What does the word shawab mean? It means to return, to remember. So if they shall rethink themselves, uh, lab right there. Lab is is um is heart or mind. All right, so here it goes uh, in Baruch 2 and 30. Before I know, I knew that thou would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves and shall know that I am the Lord their power, Yahweh, by Shem Shai, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivities and think upon my name how can we think upon the lord's name if we don't know the lord's name isaiah chapter 19 and 18 in that day what day when the lord will bring us back into our into his remembrance i will give you pastors according to mine heart which will feed you with knowledge and understanding uh, let me see i will bring the Right, Isaiah 42 and 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not because we lost it. But now the Lord is bringing it back to our remembrance. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. Why? Because we had to be, it had to be brought back to our remembrance. I will make darkness light before them because that veil that was put over the whole world, the Lord removed it by his Holy Spirit, the anointing. And crooked things straight, plantation slash renaissance Christianity, the false ways, the false breakdowns, the false interpretations of the scriptures, the Lord would remove those crooked things out of the way and make them straight. It says, these things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Because of the what? The tender mercies of the Most High, which he promised to Abraham and to his seed. So going back to Isaiah 19 and 18, in that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt, today this is speaking about America, 
America is known as modern day Egypt or spiritually as Egypt. You go to Revelation 11 and 8 and it explains that to you. It says, In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak. Speak means to say the language of Canaan. What is the language of Canaan? The language of Canaan is the Hebrew. Going back to what? To the origin of language, the Paleo-Hebrew, the Lashuan Kodash, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> language of Canaan. Images. What do we have here? We have the Hebrew language. Phoenician, then you have the Moabites, because the Moabites and the Ammonites both spoke Hebrew. <clears throat> they may have had... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> they had maybe a different dialect than we did, but they were still Hebrew. Uh, well, how can that be? How can Hebrew be spoken in many different dialects? Well, they're not even among Israel. You had the, you know, Judites and the Ephraimites that spoke different dialects, and the Ephraimites couldn't pronounce the words, the Hebrew word, like Judah could. <clears throat> I gave the example years ago when I was in high school, and this Judite cat. You know, that I was cool with. He would make fun of Ephraim. And he, you know, he, he looked at me. He said, say this word. You know, uh, I don't know, transition or transmission or one of those words with the shun in it. And I said it perfectly. And he like, he said, yeah, you know, because, you know, Puerto Ricans can't really say that word that good. You know, I mean, just a, uh, a small, minute example. But that's what Judah does. That's what the tribes do. And what would they do? They would kill those Ephraimites that couldn't pronounce the word properly. Okay, Sibileth or Shibileth. All right? <clears throat> so this is the language. Then you even had the Edomites, because the Edomites were Shemitic Hebrew peoples. They were Shemitic Hebrew Edomites. We are Shemitic Hebrew Israelites. Then you have Hebrew, 6th century. And it gives you the, 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 the language. It's still the same, but it just has little slight variations. Okay? So the Lord said that he will return us back to the what? We will be speaking the language of, of Canaan. And what? And swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. When we look up the word Lord, it's in all caps. It goes back to the word, the, what they call a tetragrammaton, Yahweh in the Aramean. This is the Aramean uh, spelling. All right. Then you have the Paleo-Hebrew or the Lashon Kodash spelling, which is different to this and as you see here they have the yah and very a very small yah not a big yah as they do you know when they when they make these uh, t-shirts and jewelry out there to make merchandise of the most highest people uh just bear with me one second i want to bring that up if i could find this real quick uh let me see just bear with me <clears throat> Uh, right, as you can see here, you have the, this is the Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, as you see there, and you have the name of the Mosai in the Paleo Hebrew, or the Lashuan Kodash, and you have the Yah, see how small the Yah is in comparison to the rest? Then you have his name here in the Assyrian script. You have the Yah Hawa, and the Yah is small. Okay, so whenever you see the Yah, see, Alahayim, the Yah is always the smaller character of them all. All right, that's why Yahweh Shai said that not one jot or one tittle shall pass from the law. All right, so whatever these devils say, you know, the Lord said he's going to return us back to you know, the true language. So are we to believe them or to believe us? Uh, or to believe Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai? Salakia was a slip of the tongue. You're, they gave us a source, Clement, which was Clement of Alexandria. He didn't speak Hebrew. He gave us Theodoret. Theodoret understood Syriac and Greek, but was not acquainted with either Hebrew or Latin. Oh, and, you know, they got the pronunciation from the Samaritans, Yabe, and this one said this way, you know. Those are traditions of men. All right? Traditions of men. Now, these 
Israelites that are into the tradition of men, of course, they they uh they go for that. You know. Uh, Colossians two and eight: Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Yahweh Shai. All right. So with that, you know, I pray that you brothers and few sisters have been edified to the next time I say Shalom.